What's up? This is Out of Pocket. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. And I am somebody. How you doing, my boy? You good? I'm doing good. <laughs> doing better than Zach Schwartz, who, as you guys have noticed, is not here today. Coachella hangover, disco biscuits, turning up. But I'm be real. Zach was sending us videos, and he was trying to flex on us lightly. Not, not majorly. He understood the FOMO that we had. But it was a lot of sausage parties, Zach. So I hope he was turning up. A uh, neon carnival. I don't know. I saw one photo with the bumper cars. <laughs> hope you was really out there getting it. Hope you didn't have to boo boo <laughs> in the porta potties. The main goal always of Coachella: don't boo boo in the porta potties. Three days, it's over like twenty four hours worth of potential time to boo boo. But here we are. I I I'm, I like to think when you know what I'm saying that he was just having so much fun he wasn't posting it because yep. like when I'm actually having fun you know I do social you know that's that's something I do when I'm bored you know what I mean so. Seeing him like not post shit, maybe he was just really kicking it. He probably didn't want to let everybody know he was, you know, tweaking off shrooms, yeah. all the good things. <laughs> like you said, disco biscuits, all the, the fun stuff. The mushrooms are turning on me. The, the adult drugs, you feel me? Well, you know, once you get to a certain status and level in life that we're both kind of reaching, you have to really project the image that you make sure you don't trick off any bags. Now, because brands are watching. Yeah. Employers are watching. Boss might be watching. Like, oh, you were way too turned up. You're not reflecting these companies' values. So you got to really reflect the company's values by not posting all the unvaluable shit that you were doing. I'm, I miss the days when I could just be on some just mm. absolutely wild shit. You know, I'm a, also I'm a you know a, a dad now, a husband. You know, you can't really. That's not a good look either. Too. It's crazy. Really I'll be tweaking. out and about now. And people be staring at me. I'm like, damn, this motherfucker want to fight me because he's staring <laughs> way too hard. Do I owe him money? We're like, and then it'll be like, oh man, I love your shit. You like, forget oh. you Josiah. You you Josiah to you. You, you king decide everybody else. It's, it's so wild. Yeah, people be calling me king and shit. Like, bro, that was just I was just mocking LeBron's King James thing. I do not think I'm a king or anything like that. But you know, what's up, king? This, that, whatever. It's like, ooh, that's how I can tell who knows me, who don't. Because you right, know, right. you call me. I'm not gonna tell you what you call me because y'all gonna start doing it. But if you know me, you call me one thing, and if if not, you call me all this other shit that I've never heard of. But it is what it is. For sure, so, for sure. So. We're here with Terrence Ross from the Orlando Magic. How you doing, my G? Doing well. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you being here, man. Yes, you, you you haven't started your workouts yet, you know. What what, what point did you really start doing that? Um, right now I'm still staying in shape, still working out. When it comes to like cardio, lifting weights, I do a little bit here and there. Um, and then probably with the basketball workouts, I'll probably start back, you know, in the gym, shooting, getting shots up, moving around. Probably next week. I mean, it's oh really, really? Early, that early? Like, yeah, I mean, I just like to stay in shape. Like I don't really like to, you know, I get bored at the house. So um, mm -hmm. when I can go to the gym, it's you know. Takes up some time and it's you know it's a win win. For sure, for sure. This is your last season in Orlando. Um, mm -hmm. is this a place you want to be? You know what I'm saying? To see yourself for the rest of the career, your career, is that what you're thinking? No, nah, I don't think so. Um <laughs> uh, nah, nah, I mean they're 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 in a rebuild and um yeah. I'm kind of past that stage. If I was younger, if I was even on a one contract before this, like it would be a different story. I'll probably, you know, want to you know write this one out and build something, but uh I've kind of already you know, done that. I've been through a few rebuilds already. So it's just like, I'm 10 years in. So it's like, you know, time's kind of going against me at this point. So I don't I really want to stay in another rebuild. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's been great here. I've had fun. I've had my chance to, you know, be a part of something where it was, you know, me, a couple other guys trying to, you know, take it as far as we could. And, um, we had some good runs. We had fun, but, uh, I think now I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm ready to, you know, transition to something else. You looking at chip time? Is it, is it about that time for you? I mean, yeah, man. I mean, at least at least being on a contender and just helping the team, and you know, you know, just bringing some of the, the knowledge I have and and being a vet that you know I could come off the bench and get buckets. Man, I mean, I'm I sure somebody. You, I feel you. I feel you. Hey, we could use yeah. you with the Lakers, G. Oh shit, y'all use up, a lot. Y'all use a lot right now with the Lakers. Man. <laughs> Lakers That's a fact. Lakers, yeah, Lakers all over the place. That's a fact. That's a fact. Well, let's talk about this weekend. You feel me? Uh, you know, Kyrie back in Boston went for 40, crazy game. But you know, I'm flipping off folks, all they think they're gonna get him for it. You think they're gonna hit him with the the, the 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 that nice hefty fine, you feel me? It was crazy. I mean, look, Kyrie's gonna get fined. To just see the emotion he has, the passion. I think after the game, he was very obviously intelligent in his response, calling him a pussy, calling him a bitch. <laughs> All those type of things you know as a human being, there's only, especially as a black man in America, going into a, a city like Boston, which has a reputation, and Boston fans always get sensitive. Facts. And, you know, they get so sensitive, they want to call you a certain word, you know, under their like breath said, or Boston. in their heads. <laughs> Put the Boston. N in Boston. <laughs> right, right, right. Boston with a capital N. <laughs> uh, but just to see the way Kyrie came back, 39 piece, and, you know, you know, we, we, 
the Kyrie with the sage is gone out the window. Now it's Kyrie telling fans, suck my dick. You know, it's, it's Kyrie double birding fans. And we live in a world now where you can't really get that off anymore. Back in the day, like watching the game angle, what did he do behind his afro? I mean, we Cameras had a, everywhere, bro. Now we got Sapruder films. Brother's back always to the watching. Left, right. Back to the left. Oh, definitely <laughs> double birded. <laughs> double birded. D- you know, so, How mad are you to double bird somebody, though? And I have literally never double birded anybody. <laughs> and that's just not like, you know, there's other ways around it. Everybody's watching. You got the eyes of the right. world. You got the ISO cameras on you. Like, they know you're going to do that shit, so just be smart about it. Yeah, he's going to have to pay about 50 to 100 racks. Adam Ooh. Silver's going to make an example out of yeah. it, especially for all the VAC stuff. And, yes. you know, it's like, look, you're a troublemaker. When you make it trouble out in this world like that, you know, generally Caucasian men in elite positions do not rock with that. That's a fact, G. I think it's, I mean, this is the thing with me, bro. 19,000 people or however many people were in the crowd calling them the shit they was calling them. You know what I'm saying? They booed him the whole game. He's still going crazy. They's booing, you know. I'm, they, what tripped me out, like, bro, the man is at 30 points now. You know, he's had like, you know, I mean, he's going on runs by himself against Boston. Yeah. Why are you still booing him, bro? It's not working, obviously. But it's just like, dog, I, I, I get it. I, I just, I mean, everybody has a limit. I think the worst thing we've seen Kyrie do as far as in reacting is stepping on the decal that is the Boston, you know, Celtics logo. You feel me? The leprechaun. I mean, but I mean, finally, he's at the point where they're all fuck y'all. You know, he said, suck my dick. He meant that shit. I get that. When you, you know, you got people saying, like calling you out your name. And I know like calling somebody a bitch is like normal, you know, basketball shit, but it's not normal, bro. Like you said, being, if, 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 if most of this shit, if you not, if you not, if you're not on the court, if they weren't on the court, they was out in the streets, bro, you throwing hands over that shit. I think it's just weird that we expect these athletes to have to deal with that shit. But I mean, they going to get them for that 50, boy. They going to get at least 50 minimum. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it's, it's wild that this is the norm. You feel me? When he stomped on that logo, honestly, it warmed my heart to see a black man stomping on an undersized Caucasian. That's your shit. That's Magically your delicious. <laughs> Magically delicious. You feel me? Uh, to see the way Big Baby respond. Oh, that's the logo. Whatever. Like you literally right. do a, a jump ball. Motherfuckers jump on his head. Literally every single game. That's where the game starts. <laughs> to move the logo if you don't want that to happen. But I think for me, this is going to be an amazing series for the Nets. You know, there was talk about you know just the Celtics having to come into this, having this great second half of the season, and now you got to face KD and Kyrie. It just seems. Like it's not, it's, it's fucked just, up. It's fucked it's up. Cold the game, game. It's the a game. cold game. The game is rigged, as, uh, <laughs> you know, as they say. So when we talk about this Nets Celtics series, obviously Kyrie coming back home to Boston, mm-hmm. uh, where he played. You know, it, it's been a little contentious. Him and the fans, he, he's flipping birds, doing stuff. When you look at that situation going on, is Kyrie out of pocket? <laughs> or is he justified and kind of, you know, and we're not hearing a lot of stuff that's going on, yeah. but we, we saw a video yesterday of him telling some fans to, you know, quote unquote, suck his, you know, yeah. you know what? Uh, he's yeah. flipping double birds. Uh, you know, I talked to Gilbert Arenas last night and Gil doesn't think that Kyrie should be fine. But when you look at that, yeah. do you think the NBA, you know, you played in the league, you know, when you do stuff like that, Adam Silver and them going to really stomp down. So when you look at that situation, who who's more at fault or do you, is Kyrie justified in his actions for what he's doing? Um, I think in this situation, you have to kind of you have to kind of look at the context of the whole of everything going on and, and the relationship with with Kyrie and Boston and everything Kyrie's. It's just the whole story developing between Kyrie and the Celtics is like, I mean, it's it's like storybook. Like he was he's going back to a place he played and had success a little bit, but also kind of turmoil towards the end. So mm-hmm. You know how Kyrie is. Like, Kyrie is, like, he's very much, you know, live and let live, peaceful dude, like, to himself. But people, you know how Boston is. Like, Boston, if anything, you get on Boston's bad side, like, they will antagonize you no matter if you play there, you play for them, you don't, whatever it is. They get a little rowdy. So you can, like, just imagine walking into an arena of 19,000 people and hearing your name, people talking SHIT about you left, right, and center. Like, you're going to be – you're gonna be like, all right, that's kind. Of, it's gonna get onto your sin no matter how zen you are. So mm-hmm. it, it just gets to a point where it starts to bubble over, and this is just game one of a long series. Um, it, it gets frustrating, man. I mean, he's. I would let him go. I mean, it's Boston. Like they're probably that's it's Boston. That's what they do. When you talk about hostile arenas, you played in every arena in the NBA. What's the the most hostile arena to go into where you know th- these fans are gonna be annoying all game? They're gonna be out of pocket. They're gonna say some stuff. That might get them faded up, you know, if they was on the streets and we was, you know, if they were saying it. Toronto. Wow. Yeah. Really? Okay. Toronto, bro. I've wow. seen it from both sides. I've been on both sides. And you of the played point. there. That's crazy. Oh, they don't roll the, the red point, carpet bro. out for you when you come through? No, they do. But that don't mean that they're not going to, like, they're going to try to sneak this and be condescending when they talk to you. Like, I'm telling you, like, since Toronto is already, like, 
it was a hockey town when I got there. And then we start to slowly change that into a basketball field. And then once it gets to like the basketball fields, like these, these fans are like, imagine somebody talking to you about your job and they don't have all the insights. So they don't know everything because it's more of a cultural thing. It's not, they just, hockey is their first and foremost, like sense of pride out there. So once it starts to switch to basketball, you start getting like these fake fans that come out of the woodwork that don't really know what they're talking about all the time. And it gets annoying. So like, that's a lot of what, and then when they win a championship, like they just, you can't tell a Toronto man nothing now because they already got their championship. They got their ring and that's what all they wanted. So now playing there, bro, they will, they will, they, they get crazy. And then they talk too crazy on the street. Like it's been times I've just been, I remember I was, uh, I think driving home from somewhere and somebody on the street saw me and I had my window down. He started talking shit to me. Like it was just one little thing. And I was on the team at this point. And I was just like, all right. <laughs> Y'all just different. For the Nets to come in, play at this level, and, and trick it off in the fashion that they did, you know, we're going to see what impact that has on them for the rest of the series. But shout out to Ime Doka, letting, so. letting the team cook, letting it go. He said after the game, yeah, we had that timeout. I would have used it if I felt the need to, but I was going to let them rock out. And, you know, finding Jason Tatum, the, the low on the defense, everybody kind of had their back to him for that game when the layup, him having the presence of mind to spin as he caught it and just get it up as time expired. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a seven-game series. For me, it made me excited. I'm a LeBron fan. Obviously, not having the Lakers in this is tough to watch, but we know we're going to have some great basketball. I think it's actually better not having the Lakers in it because I don't have to really worry about nothing. I'm yeah. really just watching as a fan, just enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? It's always, as much as I love LeBron, it's always stress the hell out of me watching him play. You True. feel what I'm saying? But, I mean, duh, Tatum, what's crazy? I remember, like, Tatum, remember Tatum said, like, if it, if it was me, I'd trade me for AD. When there was a, talk to AD yeah. being traded for him, and they were like, no, nah, we ain't doing it. And now he's really him. He's really like that. You know what I'm saying? And to see him be the player he's be, become, you know, and, and really be what everybody what everybody thought he could be is insane. But, dog, that was a great play. Slip back door behind KD. KD turned his back. And I get it because when, when Marcus Smart, bro, like – Every other player is shooting that shot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's very few players that have the 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 the, the control or the are comfortable enough in that situation to not just jack that shit with two seconds left. Yeah. You know, the, I mean, I, I mean, great pass, whatever, but, and good for Boston. I'm never rooting against Tatum. Like I said, he's from the crib, shout out to St. Louis. You feel me? But yep. it was it, it's it's wild. Like they 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 almost snuck one away. You know what I'm saying? With Kyrie putting up 40 and Katie not having the best game. I mean, when Katie plays solid, we'll see what happens. But yo, that was a that was a that was a I watched every second of that damn series. That was a fire ass game. And speaking of Jason Tatum, when when he comes to the Lakers, you think he's going to still play at the same level? Like he's you think? Look great in that I jersey. mean, those, those game winners are going to look phenomenal in the purple oh, and gold. Man, he's going to look. We already saw in that the love in his heart when he got to wear the jersey for the photo series they were doing. Where I think they had him do Kobe's game winner, right? And yeah, you know, Boston. Okay, but. Let's get to LA. Even Boston fans, well, I knew a couple of them hit me up like, "Yo, he did look great in that jersey." So phenomenal. <laughs> you can't, you can't deny, it. you can't deny it. All right, let's talk about the other series that everybody's really tapping into: Memphis Grizzlies versus the Timberwolves. What's wild is Memphis is a great team. I think what they've done this season is incredible. You know, what I'm saying the coach is up for Coach of the Year, and he should be. You know, what I mean, but. They're a young ass team. I think if there's any two seed that's been beatable, they're a beatable two seed. And what's wild about that Timberwolves game is that was very repeatable what they did. Nobody really played outside of themselves. They looked like they were the better team. Ain't nobody scared of them little ass footsteps, uh, Memphis. <laughs> oh, ain't nobody scared of you. You ain't scared of LeBron's big footsteps. Ain't nobody scared of them little footsteps. <laughs> But shout out to Anthony Edwards. And when you look at Kyrie and the situation he dealt with in Boston, but also Anthony Edwards on his side saying that he really embraces and relishes that and loves being told that you suck and came in and put on a bucket getting festival. Uh, you know, young boy, just man, funny just so dude, good. you know, dropping jacks at the end of, uh, you know, you say whatever, you know, we hear Jack, whatever he said after the game, but just a dude that, that you love to see kind of coming into his own. And Ja and, and going against Ann, just that series and what it's going to be. Whew. But again, this is probably the toughest matchup I would say the Grizzlies, you know, could have could have wanted to face in this young, hungry mm -hmm. Minnesota squad. We was bashing them on Tuesday, you know, for over-celebrating. But they got a, you know, a few days rest, got to come into Memphis now. And look, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's going to be tough, right? You know, like, I have a dream. Memphis, MLK, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Where's the has got going? a dream. He gonna Where's bust he? that ass. <laughs> hey. He got a dream. He gonna bust that ass. Hey, we saw Cat 
boom on Jaron Jackson. They ain't there for play. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah, they celebrated, but they 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 they, they didn't think that it's over. You know what I'm saying? They they came and ready to play. Like, and, and Edwards, bro. Like, I I know Melo's a dude from that draft that you know has been an All Star already. You know, special player. But man, I I, I try to watch and as much as I can, dude. And to see him step up first playoff game ever, drop a thirty ball, just comfortable. I'm mean, running from the moment. Give me the rock, please. You know, a couple ill advised shots in there, but shots that you'd like to see a guy confident enough to take at that. Exactly. Like, I'm not exactly. tripping. I'm pulling this exactly. three, heat checking, whatever. Who, come see me. And and John Moran too. John's not a guy. But my favorite thing, obviously, was was Cass Dad and John's dad. Love it. Ja, you know, it was, he looked like Usher until he started talking like that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he started dropping out. I'm like, damn, is that Usher? Like, he need to go slide. He did look like Usher. I thought it was Usher until I, I said, oh, shit, you feel me? He going to be uh, sliding it out in Cancun if right. uh, it's not no delivery. But you see them dudes dapping up. And that's just a part of basketball stuff we love yeah. to see. So it's going to be a great series. I think we got a ton of great basketball to watch. When you look at all these series out there, what's the most intriguing playoff series for you right now? Definitely this uh, Brooklyn Boston. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was like, oh, "Watch out for Brooklyn! Watch out for Brooklyn!" Forgetting that Boston was the number one team in the East the whole second half of the season. So they they're they're in stride right now, and it's looking like it might be really hard to beat if they if they win the second one at home. Then all the pressure is on on Brooklyn. Also, then I would say another. My uh, probably not number one that I probably overlooked was Minnesota Memphis. Yeah, mm-hmm. because yep. you just feel like the whole time they play NBA young boy between both teams, and it's going to be a fight at some point. Somebody's going to get dunked on. It's going to be a lot of trash talking. Like I like that type of like dirty low down like scrum basketball. Like it's going to get physical. It's going to remind you of something like the old days a little bit, like back in the eighties where they pushing and shoving. But um, between Ant, Cat, Ja, Jaren, it's getting good. So. We're going to see how that plays out. You know, I feel bad. You know, you're looking at uh, the ACs that came in from the playing game. Right. Both had struggled a little bit. Obviously, the Pelicans did a lot better than the, the Hawks did. But to put Trey in that position where he got to play a game Friday night and then come back Sunday morning right. in Miami, can't even hit live and turn up a little bit. Unfortunate. But no, he'll be I, back. I feel like that series, I know, like, you know, you said the Pelicans played better. But I think the Hawks are a better team. And I think that... You know, I, I think I've underestimated the Heat a little bit. I thought the Hawks could win that series. Yeah, no. Nah. They, they're not going to win the series, but I think they'll make it fun. I think I think that was an anomaly. I don't think they'll get <laughs> cooked by 30. I turned that motherfucker off, G. I was like, bro, I'm not wasting my time with sure. this. You feel me? But, yeah, like, it, it was it, – I, I think that series will be good. It's unfortunate, but uh, – but, yeah, what's wild? What, what, I think this – I think this playoffs could be one of the wildest first rounds we've ever seen. For sure. I, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of there's a lot of good teams that are beatable, especially the West. The West is wide open outside of um uh outside of the Suns. We know the Suns probably going to get up out of there, you feel me? And when it comes to the East, you know, the Bucks looked very beatable yesterday. You know what I'm saying? They look very beatable. I think everybody's beatable in the East, you know what I'm saying? So, um the Nets are a 7 seed. That's crazy, but yeah. Um, should be good for playoffs. I'm, I'm excited about this. It's fun. It's fun to actually get to see basketball that actually fucking matters. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? Watching these damn Lakers all year. You know what I'm saying? Where it seemed like nothing mattered. We knew what time it was. But. Basketball and black lives. <laughs> they matter. <laughs> right? Facts, facts, facts. <laughs> all right. That's the show. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. I'm King Josiah 54. I didn't have a, a good one for this because we kind of just jumped into it, but all gravy. All right, my G. Y'all be cool. Peace. Disco Biscuits. Oh, hello, Buckets. Did you enjoy that video? Well, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to the channel, check out some of the other videos we have. They're all fantastic. Also, like the video and make sure to comment on it, anything you want to tell any of us.